Okay guys, grow the farm up. We're here standing in a field of uh, commercial corn that was no-till planted directly into cover crop. And I've got here a tool that is a shovel and a ruler. Let's take a look at this corn crop and see what we think about it. It's time to turn the pivots back on, that's for sure. Let's take a look here. Okay, now you can see down the row. Okay, maybe this way is a little better with the shadowing. You can see down the row. Okay, got nice, good, dark green coloration in the new growth coming out. It's really just getting into it. That's a, that's a good looking plant right there. It's really just getting into it. So, uh, it's fertility for the year and I mean you can see spots like this where there's cover crop look like the best plants come up it's amazing in fact let's uh let's take a look at him huh shall we let's see how this goes okay so we'll go in and as you can see we are five inches deep we'll see if that hits the roots or not okay, we went in about another half inch deep oh wow look at that Look at that. Oh, wow. That is remarkable. Look at that. I mean, we even cut some root. Look at how far down that root rhizosphere is going. I mean, we took a lot. Look, and look at the, look at all the little, the little hairy hairies. Now it's the big roots that matter. I mean, contrary to what, but it means you've got really good biology and you've got really good organic matter when all of your roots put out these little hairy hairies, your big roots. I mean, the big roots matter a lot. You know, I think some people put too much stock into these little hairy hairies, but what that tells you is that you've got good, uh, good, uh, good uh, uh, organic matter and, and good biology. Let's see here. The stand looks good. I mean, again, no-till planted into it. Look, go ahead and look at the stand. I mean, the placement's pretty good. I mean, a seed every every five and three quarters inches are pretty good. Pretty good spacing. I mean, I'm just you know, there's a skip. Pretty good spacing. I mean. Let's just take a look at this guy here. Okay, we're in about five and a half inches deep. Up come the roots. And look at that, look at that, look at that. Look at how deep those corn roots are going. That's an even, that's a much better shot than the first one. Still breaking them off. Look at, look at those roots. Those roots are taller than the corn crop is. Let's break it down. Uh, and a little bit of good, good, you know, look. Oh, and look at that. An earthworm on an earthworm right there. Did you see it? He just fell off. An earthworm right on the rhizosphere. I mean, that is exciting. Look at that. Look at that, folks. That is a remarkable, remarkable looking root rhizosphere for may 20 uh may 29th and this was planted i want to say may 1st i believe is what i think this is the field i put on my last video i think this is about the place where we were planting and you can see i don't know if the zoom in helps or not you know a lot of it is i just i just think here you know look crosswise I just think aesthetically, it does not look as good as non-cover crop fields for the first, you know, six weeks of the year. I honestly think that's what turns a lot of guys off. I mean, it's, you know, I'm looking at this, look, look at the weed control. There's not a weed in the field except for a few rogue, uh, 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 what I would call uh, volunteer cover crop. There you go. Well, look, look at the weed control. I mean, there's not a weed out here. I mean, honestly, 
I'm really impressed with that. I mean, we're still looking. I have yet to spot one. Let's let's go ahead and find here. Here's a spot where there's not very good coverage. You should see some little weed root hairs growing. If there's weed, and there should be some weeds coming, but they say in healthier soils that weeds don't. That's very interesting. <laughs> and this is one of the more bare spots of the field. But let's take a look at one more plant and then we'll move along because I got stuff to do. Boy, that's these are just healthy looking. Winter, 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 winter. I mean, let's take a look at this guy. I think you gotta scoot over a little bit and then you gotta go all the way in six inches deep, definitely. I'm gonna break my shovel trying to get him out of here. I don't, whoa! Hey, hey, hey! We'll see how this one goes. Oh, yeah. It did, look at that. That just flipped. Look, wow. That was cool. It flipped right out of the end. That one gives you a pretty good indication. It looks like we broke some off. But look at that. That is really great. Wow, boy. I tell you what. We've, we've got our... Oh, those little hairy hairies. I've heard some people tell me those are the most important roots. No, it's it's these it's these guys, these brace roots, and you, you want to get as much room as you can between the seed. You see, here's the old seed, and your brace roots. Not necessarily three inches, but you want to be plus two inches if you really want to go for it. It'll make the most stand. Uh, it'll it'll be the most standable. Boy, that's a, that's such a good one. We're gonna replant him. Turn the pivot on and water him back up. <laughs> so anyway, this is what it looks like. Uh, May 29th, basically one month after planting and fertilizing, and regener regenerative no-till farming. You've had a living. Hey, we found one, and guess it is the dirty, dirty Palmer amaranth. We found one. So unfortunately, there are a few that have escaped. I mean, Palmer amaranth, if you wanted to create life on Mars, shoot some Palmer amaranth spores at Mars, and Palmer amaranth will terraform that whole planet. I don't care if there's no oxygen, no water, no nothing, it'll survive it. Palmer amaranth is terrible. But, but that's, uh, you know, in a 10 minute walk around the field, if you see one, couple you're not seeing that means there's a few and that one was a few inches tall too dang it so but uh, otherwise this whole field would kind of be covered with those had if we did not have this cover crop so uh, very, I guess a very good uh, a very good observation you know I mean you're gonna have to use much less herbicide not zero but much less with the cover crop and uh, I mean, obviously, I've got them out here. If we found one walking around in 35 rows for 10 minutes, yeah, I bet you I'm going to go look a little deeper here. And I bet you you'll find another one and then another one, and dang it, you'll go, yeah, probably better, you know, spray those things called weeds. Here's a little one coming. Just a itty bitty guy. It's on the drive track. That looks more like a uh, water hemp. Uh, same same family as Palmer amaranth, but not exactly. <laughs> and again, I've never had to do this in my life. I get this is good that I walked over here to finish this video up. Uh, never in my life have I had to irrigate so much that I had to close the pivot tracks in season. <laughs> I had to come through and close the pivot tracks in season. I mean. Can you give me a rain, please? I, I sequestered the carbon. I brought it down here. You know, the carbon got uh, converted into oxygen and carbon went to the so into the soil, which by the way, my soil wants your carbon. You truck drivers out there and diesel engine operators, my soil wants you rolling coal. Actually, we, we buy and pay for and, and farmers put sulfur on. Um, their fields so just to you know if we could just get like 30 40 percent 20 percent of america's heartland cropland and regenerative uh year-round uh, green farming i think you'd be like carbon negative 
as a country and then you could just take all of the emission systems off all of those engines and solve a lot of economic and environmental problems grow the farm up